Good morning or evening or afternoon, wherever you are out there in the world. Nemo Ashong here, and it is an absolute pleasure to get to say hello to you today. Ah, I'm the founder of Enjoyment and leader of the Pioneer community. And today I wanted to start this off here with a question. What makes us different? And how can we leverage that to pursue possibilities worth creating? I'm going through this right now and exploring this on my own. And one of the questions I have in there is, uh, and it's an ask right off the bat, I'll come out and ask here. Please share one thing that you've noticed about me that you feel makes me different. That is one of the, the reason I'm asking this here is because I know it's an amazing gift. I know it's an amazing gift to be able to know the things about you that make you unique so you can do more of that and do that intentionally. Last, um, the last week I was at uh, the Rich Lifting Public Intensive and um, one of the things happened that, that occurred there was I was sitting down uh, and there was like, there was some mindfulness that was taking place, just, just kind of getting us oriented into the room and what was going on. And uh, someone came up to me afterwards and they're like, I loved, I love looking out into the room because there were a lot of stoic faces, you know, everyone was like deep and deep in the meditation, you know, getting, like feeling themselves and really centering and all that. And if you just look across the sea, of people there, um, you have the stoic, I'm taking my time and I'm getting in there. And then you also had me. And for me, it was just this experience of like really just, it was this. <sighs> this aspect of just being able to, to uh, enjoy just really connecting with myself there. And someone had, um, someone was kind enough afterwards to come and tell me this, come and share this with me. I, my eyes were closed. I had no clue what anyone else was doing. And then to be honest, I didn't care. <laughs> this is like me trying to do my thing, getting, getting what I needed to, to get done to be able to um, really be excellent throughout the intensive and be excellent for you uh, afterwards. And, uh, but someone came up, his name was Mark. He came in, he's like, you know, out of the sea there, like that was happening. Like it was just seeing you just beaming there. and. What occurred for me was that throughout that entire week, I got a lot of people come up to me and just share. They're like, your positivity, your joy, there's something that just radiates, uh, that's radiating through you. And I realized just how much of a gift that was. It wasn't even like, it wasn't that it was like a new realization, to be honest, it's something that like, I, that I've felt and I've experienced in the past, but it reaffirmed something that was really true, right? Reaffirmed that aspect of like, wait, there's something that I do differently than others. And that's a good thing. I'll come out here and say it, it, it feels, I can feel my, myself tensing up just putting this out there. So, uh, so that means I should go for it, right? Um, so the thing that I don't want you, what, the thing that I don't want to say right now is that a lot of times I find myself to be one of the, one of the only or one of the few. Um, you know, I am an African American male that's been in, uh, been an actuary. Turns out, and I just found this out uh, not too long ago, that uh, 2% of all actuaries are ac African American. Go figure, I had no clue. I am also, uh, have also been in tech in the past, right? And so uh, there's also that aspect there around like, okay, I've also been one of the few and only. But I find myself being able to finding myself in these kinds of situations often when I'm in Singapore when I'm it's and it's not it has nothing has very little to do with what I look like and just more about like how I operate in the world right if you've uh, if you ever gotten a chance to hang out with me you know that I'm <laughs> I have no problem keeping things honest but it uh, it's something that goes on multiple levels it's an honesty in being positive and there's also an honesty in being constructive uh, and that's one of, one of the things that, uh, that I really pride myself on in the aspect of just being able to keep, to, to share my truth, you know? Now that there, that aspect of being able to give out the, um, both the positive comments as well as, you know, the constructive comments. Um, and to me, I, I can be constructive in my positivity. Um, you know, that there did not come by accident. That actually was something that was really started to cultivate through my Hobie experience. Um, that experience was a few years ago, my wife, Nicole, uh, then girlfriend at the time, took me to Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership in Central Pennsylvania. And I got a chance to uh, lead a group of 
lead a group of young leaders. Uh, there were 16 year old ambassadors through the Hobie program who had been identified uh, through their high schools as uh, as leaders right now and people who had the potential to really uh, make a make a change and an impact in uh, in their world. So uh, Nicole invited me to, to do this. She herself was an ambassador when uh, when she was 16, uh, and it was something that was really important to her. It was like, like up until that point, I had seen. I don't know. I like it was just one of those things where I walked in and they they were sending me emails with all capital letters and everyone was like super excited. I'm like, what is going on? Mind you, I'm like 24, 25, living in New York City at the time, and like there's just this outrageous amount of <laughs> of positive energy and excitement and all caps and all that. And I'm like, what what are y'all doing? What are y'all? You know what? I promised Nicole I would do this. When I get to that point in uh, in the experience, when I actually show up, I can I, I'll show up fully as myself, and you know just do whatever I can. Actually, it wasn't fully as myself. I, I want to say that now because I can say that pretty confidently uh, in this moment. But at that time, it was just like I'm just going to show up and see what happens because this is Nicole's thing. I like her. Let's see what this world what this world is for her. So. I ended up attending uh, the, the four day seminar and a couple of different things happened. The first thing, I think the, the biggest thing on like the macro level was that I got a chance to experience what it can be like to really facilitate growth in a positive, affirming, supportive environment where you're encouraged to, to, to not only just dream more, but to help bring those dreams to life. That through, you're encouraged to step into the leader, not in, not in a few, future state but right then and there and that's something that as I've grown older I've like or as time has gone by I've been able to see as something that's really special about the Hobie program where it's not hey we're teaching you leadership skills so that you know when you hit college you can go and bring this into life or after you graduate you can bring this into life they're like right now you are a powerful person there are things that you can do right now to really make an impact and you know the, the way that they go about doing this through a number of different um, different means from uh, education to showcasing others who have been in their shoes and some of the things that they've done um, and to really just giving people a chance to, to wear like to be the version of themselves that that they didn't think that they were allowed to be for a while hmm the version of ourselves that we didn't think we were allowed to be I think that right there is is an important comment. I, I wasn't anticipating that coming out, but I have the pleasure nowadays to, to spend time with really amazing people, pioneers who are multi-talented, multi-passionate. They have they've, their track record of success. It inspires me. That's actually one of my criteria for when I want to spend time with someone. I'm like, is this person like, is there something about this person that in, inspires me? They don't have to be they don't have to be, you know, uh, getting us over to the moon and back and then over to Mars and so on. Uh, but is there something about, is there a quality in this person that just makes me go, ooh, ooh, I like. Um, and that aspect of allowing ourselves to be, to be ourselves, to allowing ourselves to do it right now is something that really sh like came through to me in, in Hobie. During those times, during those days, the, the transformation that, that occurred and the it's really the ownership. It's really like, it, when I say transformation, I really feel that it was just the shedding of everything else of what uh, everyone else had told them that they needed to be and just taking a lot more, a lot more of a, a closer step toward what they actually wanted to do uh, and bringing that and, and not waiting to bring it to life. When I got back to New York after Hobie, uh, my first time, I went and I talked to a colleague and you know, you know how these things go. You go out for an experience like this and you know, you've changed and you've been able to have an experience unlike anything else, um, but the rest of the world hasn't. And I, I got my first real feel of that when I came back to uh, my office the, the, uh, the next day. And in true Hobie spirit, you know, uh, shared something positive about my coworker. There was something that she did that, that really um, that, that really stuck out to me. And I can't remember exactly what it was right now, but it was just like, I, I do remember her reaction to, to me saying it. And it's a reaction I get actually quite a lot. It's a reaction I get a lot when I give someone a positive, true statement about something that they excel at, you know, something that makes them different, something that stands out to me about them in their mind. And it's usually just this look of like, Thanks. 
what are you trying to get at? Where did this come from? Like, are you being sarcastic? There's a, this whole realm of like not being able to accept or being able to take it in at, for what it is, which actually, is, to, to tell you the truth, saddens me. Um, it really makes me sad because it's like it's like we are so ready, so primed, so like like in, in a position that like we can hear that we can hear bad things. And when someone says you need to improve this and you need to or you need to work on this or and so on and so forth, we're so ready to take that in. But when someone gives a positive statement, that there that there ends up being um, something that's harder to bring in. And you know, as I'm saying this out loud, I I can understand why. Like if you think about it here, um, there's a, a common practice to to give a feedback sandwich, right? They're like, you know, you don't want to just go out and give someone negative feedback. You want to start out and give them some positive feedback, and then you put in a little bit of uh, you put in the meat, which is the uh, you know the constructive feedback, and then you know you don't want to just leave them in that that space. So you want to go back again to the positivity. And I think like, as I'm saying this out here, the realization that's coming to my mind is, is two things. Well, firstly, um, I've been kind of thinking about it, the way that I, I have experienced uh, this this uh, sandwich when done poorly. <laughs> it's been something that's like 5% uh, positivity uh, and positive things that have gone on and the F, F, affirming your strengths and pulling out the things that went well. 90% about what you need to change and what you go better next time. And then uh, another 5% about like, but hey, like really happy to see this here and I'm really excited for what, what can come up from there, right? So it's like the majority of, of the sandwich is just unpleasant, you know? Just not not pleasant, not an, not an awesome experience. Um, and so I can, it kind of like reflecting on that, I can see why people would feel that if something good came along, it's gonna be immediately followed by something bad. Okay, great, you give me you give me the good news, just hit me with the bad news, you know? Um, there was someone, there was a, I almost wanna say it was Brene Brown, um, who was like describing uh, the, the experience of a, a family that's driving down a country road and they're all enjoying one another's company and someone starts humming a song, the other person next to them, you know, it's like the other person uh, starts humming next to them as well and then the parents just start like, you know, tapping on the steering wheel and the next thing you know, they're all busting out in the song and it's just like this really wonderful sunny day as they move through this country road uh, along on, on the highway. And I think if you've if you've seen this and if you can imagine this going on through your mind, those those kind of like perfect surreal moments where it's like, whoa, that was awesome. I think you know what happened to that family next. And it's interesting because a lot of us here in this moment would just expect like I've, I've brought this up to like absolute catastrophe. You know, there was a sinkhole and the entire family went in. The car blew up and whatever it is. Like our minds go to these places that are just like, okay, that was good, but it can't last. And not only was it, it was so good. It was so positive, so awesome that like the opposite needs to happen. The, the, the most painful experience needs to take place afterwards. I think that is something that is, um, it, it's something that like has been ingrained in us. It's, it's come in from uh, TV, from different things that we've done that just make it seem that if something's going well, then, th well, the other shoe has to drop at some point. And what I've found recently is that like, what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't have to drop? Or if it does drop, it's just like, uh, it's like a nice step, you know, just like, oh, okay, I put a toe in. You know, but like overall, it's not. It, what if it doesn't need to be as destructive? And what if just the the fear of, of that negativity um, is, keeps us from being able to experience even more joy? We get level one joy and think, oh my goodness, this is like like I'm happy, but it can't last. So let me let me start sabotaging it. <sighs> wow, what if there were le higher levels beyond that? What if you're even just experiencing the very beginning and, and you just, we haven't allowed ourselves to continue to experience it further? I started this whole conversation around the aspect of being different. And from what I, what I the reason I wanted to start off this conversation here is that for me, what I've found is that I'm no longer interested in being the best or being right. Neither of those things have like any real interest to me because I just realized there is no such thing as the right answer. You know, there's, there are people who've made a ton of mistakes and that's why they're successful, right? Uh, and this 
I have found that most of the time when I when I personally try and play the best game uh, and being the, the number one, the, the, the best person for the job, um, the best person to hire, the best person that can provide this this particular service, I immediately and willingly allow myself to enter this game of open competition where on a number of different criteria, I am being compared to a lot number of different people. And in, when it comes to that there, I look at it as like a, a crowded market. Like if you're going out and you're looking over a market uh, that has like thousands of people in it, right? Let's even just use hundreds to, to, you know what? Let's even make it easier. Dozens. So there's like a hundred people in like this really crowded room. Let's use that because so, I think that's easier to visualize, right? If you came out there and you said, hey, I'm looking for Nemo and someone said, oh yeah, he's somewhere in this room. Like even if you had like a bird's eye view, it would be hard to find this person, right? Compare that to someone else that's all alone, that's maybe in a, in a much smaller room. You know, they're even in a closet, you know, and they go and they say, I'm looking for Nemo. And it's like, oh, yeah, he's in the closet. Right. Uh, that's, that's, that's There's multiple levels there. Um, but you can go ahead and you can find him right, right, over, right over there. Uh, and if you go and you open up the door, then boom, there you are. And, and there I am. And there you are. Right. And there's this level of just like it's just ease. Right. In the market, in the place where we're all competing, where we're all looking to be the best there, there's just this ongoing struggle to really stand out and shine up and uh you know and and really beat the rest of the people around us and i just choose to to work with people and to to live to to see the world differently and say well you can be the best or you can just be different and being different seems to often take a lot less energy it often it often allows you to just be your if you're trying to figure out how to be the best it's like okay well what is this other person there's a lot of comparison and a lot of pleasing what do i need to do for you to consider me to be the best right it's not even like a personal thing it's like how do i how do i make make sure that other people consider me to be the best how do i make sure other people see me to be right and being different the key there the the key that i found out is that it's just about being more of yourself it's about being more of yourself uh, and so, so what I mean by that there is like being able to, to say, okay, I'm going to be the one and only, or I'm one of the few who will do this. And if you're looking for this particular type of service or this way of, of getting this service done, great. Then I'm your person. And if you're looking for a completely different other uh, approach to it, awesome. That's not me. You know, you can go over and you can, you can, you can. Find, find that with uh, a number of different other, uh, other people. But it's differentiation is, is key. And it's interesting because as I say this here, um, what's coming to mind is that they, they kind of feel like business terms, you know? What's your brand? What's your, how do you differentiate yourself from others? How do you differentiate yourself from the competitors? What's your blue ocean strategy? All that, right? Creating your own thing. Um, and we can, we can say that these things are true when it comes to um, our business or professional life, but when it comes to ourselves, I don't think we give ourselves that that uh, freedom and that gift of accepting that in a similar way. So from that perspective, it's like, how can you allow what makes you different to be the thing that makes you so exceptional? Now I'm going to end this here with a little bit of a, a little bit here on figuring out what makes you different, all right? So I, I work with people specifically around helping them discover, embrace, leverage, and celebrate the things that make them different, the things that make them unique, so that they can bring that out into the world and create positive change. So in a way that's effortless for them. And one of the things that I have found to be helpful in uh, in discovering what makes me different is just to ask. Is to ask and to ask very, very honestly, very openly, um, and to take in whatever comes in, regardless of if it's something that you want or not. One of the best gifts that I've ever gotten uh, was organized by Margaret Ellen before I left AppNexus. And um, she got a number of my colleagues to uh, come, the uh, number of AppNexians, right? My colleagues, I'm like, it just feels so distant. <laughs> a number of AppNexians uh, and friends to share uh, some of the things that, um, some of the memories that they have of, of me, some of the things that they will never forget, uh, and some of the things that um, that they really enjoyed about our experience together. And what came from that was this, I, I go back and I watch this often actually, uh, this wonderful collection of people letting me know what it is about me 
that stands out for them? What about what it is about me that makes me different, that makes them uh, enjoy spending time with me or makes them think about me uh, and, and have a positive reaction? And it was it's interesting because like it, it, it might be seen as a nice gesture, but it, it's actually turning to be one of the biggest gifts that I've ever gotten. Because whenever I'm whenever I'm doubting myself, Whenever I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to do or the right thing to do, because I get caught in these traps as well. Um, I can go back to that video. I can go back to some of the things that I wrote down from it uh, and say, wait, hold on, Nemo. At the end of the day, there was, you spent years at Nexus and you did a number of different things. But when it came down to it, when someone had 30 seconds to say like what it is about you that, that they really appreciated, it kept coming down to the same things. It kept coming down to your positive attitude. It kept coming down to your smile, your willingness to get deep uh, and to go into a deep conversation with, with people. Your, uh, your ability to see things as being, being uh, able to be done. You know, like being able to work with people and on things that they had maybe had some difficulty seeing how is this actually going to be possible. And you working in there, rolling up your sleeves and saying, of course, we can get this done. Like, how do you want to get it done? That's the more that's more of the question. I didn't know that these were just things that I was doing. And I actually thought that a lot of the things that they would have commented on would have been the various projects that I worked with them on or the various outcomes that have had, you know, company wide impact or, you know, group wide or community wide impact. But it wasn't that it was a lot through a lot of like the smaller things that came up there. A lot of the things that I couldn't even notice because quite frankly, it was just how I operated. And the thing about it was that they identified and they shared so graciously the things that made me different. So I'm gonna invite you to go on this journey for yourself, all right? This is part one of, of what I like to work with people on is to help them discover. And this is one of the tools, one of the ways that you can do it, just ask. And not like, and ask from a thing of like, what really makes me different? What is the thing that, that when you think about me, you're like, oh, well, this is what makes you you. Or this is why I come to you at the end of the day. And spend some time just, just understanding what that is. Because it's not, it's not that, I guess the way I'm looking at it is that it's not that it's a, anything new to you, but just the acknowledgement and recognition of the things that you do that, you, that might be unconscious to you. It's really moving from a level of, uh, of, of unconsciousness to consciousness, to becoming aware at, at the things that, that when you do them, have multiples on that, right? That when you do it, it allows you to get 10x results. We talk a lot here about exponential uh, results here. And part of that is it's making sure that you're playing in the places and doing things in a way that gets you multiples on your investment of time and energy, right? And so to do that there, we start out with knowing what, what your unique talent is, knowing what your unique gifts are. Some of it can be retrospect like introspective, but a lot of times they're so close to us that it's hard to, to see ourselves. So I invite you to just go ask, let's just make this simple here because I like to keep things uh, keep things doable. Ask one person, one person that, that you like, know, trust, uh, to just share like, what are, some, what are some of the things that you find really make me different? You really appreciate about me. That like, when you come to any of your other friends or any of your other colleagues or any of your other coworkers or any of your uh, other teammates or whatever it is, you're like, I can come to you because of this and I, and I keep coming to you because of this. And my ask of you is, uh, if you choose to do this here, invite them in a way that allows them to be a part of your journey. You know, like there is a way to ask for things that I think makes, that makes a difference. You know, there's, a, there's an ask of, you know, hey, uh, I'm trying to understand this. Can you share it with me? There's another ask that, that says, oh, so let me, let me rephrase that. Let me be like, hi, I'm really trying to understand some of the things that make me different so I can go ahead and leverage that going forward. Would you mind taking some time to share, uh, share your thoughts on that? That's one way and it's direct and it gets there. Um, there's also ways of, of just being honest and open about what, what it is that you have. Hey, I'm really, I'm really looking into uh, the aspects of, the th of me that make me different. From what I, what I feel is that if I can do more of that, if I can be more of those things, uh, it will make the work that I do that much more impactful. It will make the um, the time that I spend with you and others uh, will be able to get so much more from it because I can just lean way more into my own comfort zone um, and use that to stretch out of my comfort zone. 
I would really appreciate your honest opinion on uh, of this your honest your honest feedback and look it's I'm, I'm asking a few people so it's not like you have to uh, be perfect with it but I would just love to just hear like what are some of the things about me that really stand out or what are some of your favorite memories of me that might be an even uh, easier question what are some of your favorite memories and why why was that the case you know what did I do what were the things that stuck out to me why why did you come to me in that moment why like what what makes that consistently stick out in your mind and just be honest and use that as an opportunity to, to show up as yourself too, you know, to show up in a, in a, in a powerful way for yourself um, and just ask, all right? So we'll leave it at that there. I'm gonna ask you all here, for me, it has come out to be one of the things that have just been the most beneficial over and over to just find out what is it about me that, that, that differentiates me? What is, it, what is it about me that, uh, that y'all like love, right? And not from the standpoint of, hey, I want you to be this, but more of the standpoint, like from your own perspective, like, yo, dude, this is what makes you different. Just so you know, like, I love it when, or this, you know, one of my favorite memories of you is um, when you jumped on the Facebook Live and you walked into a wall immediately and then you just turned and you just laughed and you smiled. I think that there's something about just your ability to do that that, that feels really refreshing and encouraging. Uh, and I wanna just point that out for you. Those kinds of things here, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna really try and step into it here. I'm gonna ask, what is something that makes me different in your mind, right? And just share it. Leave a comment, send me a message, but just share it. Um, and we'll go from there. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll just let you know in on some, one of my secrets here. What I've found is that because I, because I spend time really searching for and trying to understand what makes someone unique, what makes someone awesome, what makes uh, what their unique talents and gifts are, what makes them different. It helps me discover and embrace it for myself. It helps me see it in myself because I'm seeing it in others. Now I'm not, I'm nowhere near as good at it for from a self-reflection perspective, but it is one of those things where it's helped me be able to even just embrace it, to be able to say, oh, yeah, I've seen that in others. I guess perhaps part of the reason I see that is because I myself really respect it. I enjoy you and I appreciate you. Thank you for spending some time uh, with me here. I'm really looking forward to to hearing what are some of the things that, um, that you find about me to be different and then also what are some of the things that um, others have shared about you that are different. It'd be really great to, to just like have this experience and go on this journey with you, all right? Here is to your joyful success, Jerry on.